Thank you for being interested in the Blue Ridge Bumblebee Mega Transect. Today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this project. Unfortunately, bumblebee populations are in decline due to pesticides, disease, and habitat loss. To help gain a better understanding of the current status of bumblebees, this project will use a combination of field techniques to study species distribution and relative abundance, as well as lab techniques to examine genetic diversity and inbreeding. But we couldn't do any of this without your help. We need volunteers to be in the field surveying for bumblebees. But first, we need to give you some information on how to survey for bumblebees. The first thing we will show you is what supplies you need. You will need a research permit with you at all times. This permit can be downloaded from the project's website and you may be asked for it by a ranger while you're out collecting. You'll also need a notebook to record all relevant data. Next you'll need a smartphone or a watch to time the survey. The survey needs to be 10 minutes long. The next thing you need is a GPS device to record the location of your survey site. If you do not have one, you can just record where you are in your notebook and describe it in detail. Next thing you need is your net to catch your insects with. We'll be distributing these throughout the, the system at visitor centers. You'll also need a pair of gloves to keep yourself from getting stung when handling the bees inside the net. Next you'll need your soapy water inside of a Tupperware container with a tight fitting lid. This is used to immobilize the bees before putting them in the ethanol. And lastly, you'll need ethanol and vials or whirl packs to store your samples in so they can be transported to us for identification. If you have an allergy or a suspected allergy to bee stings, you might want to consider getting an epinephrine pen. You can go to your doctor and ask for a prescription and keep it with you in the field just in case you get stung. Now that you know what supplies you'll need, Next, we're going to show you how to locate your mile marker and choose the appropriate habitat within the site. Most mile markers within the Blue Ridge Parkway have a monument showing you which mile you're on. But not all the parks have these, so it's really important to use your odometer. If you find the monuments have skipped the number you're looking for, just drive to the next monument Turn around and reset your odometer and drive back exactly one mile and that will be your site. In areas that don't have monuments at all, you have to really rely heavily on your odometer stopping every two miles or use your GPS to find the exact coordinates of the mile marker. Also, there might not be appropriate habitat right at your mile marker. In this case, just travel on either end of the mile marker and search for appropriate habitat such as a clearing with lots of flowers. But don't travel too far away from the mile marker. Try to stay within about a quarter of a mile from the monument. And if you do choose a site that's not right at the mile marker, be sure to record GPS coordinates or if you don't have a GPS, just mark down in your notebook exactly what you did. Now let's talk about what to do once you've found your mile marker. The first thing you need to do when you're stopping to catch bees is find an appropriate place to park your car. You don't want to just pull off on the side of the road and leave your car in, in the road where you might get hit or block traffic. Preferably you'd be at a mile marker with a parking lot just like this or pull completely off the road in, into a soft level part of grass that you can easily get out of. You definitely want to think about safety when you're parking your car. The next thing about a site is its habitat. You definitely want to find a clear opening with lots of flowers such as mint or clover that will attract bumblebees. Once you find your appropriate habitat then you will want to start your timer either set a timer on your phone or set a, set a timer on your watch and set it for 10 minutes and after 10 minutes you're done sampling and you can go to the next site. 
Now that you know how to choose an appropriate site for your survey, you should be ready to capture some bees. But make sure you're going out on a clear day when it's sunny and the bees are active. So the first method of catching bees um, is to just walk around in the habitat, uh, basically somewhere like this with a lot of good flowers and a lot of really open area. And you just look around. My favorite method for finding one is to listen. You can really hear them buzzing before you see them. So once you hear one buzzing and you zero in on where it is, you can do one of two methods. Uh, you can take your net with the open end this way and you can sweep quickly side to side like this. And once you get, once you get them in the net, you do a flipping method like that where it flips the, flips the net closed and keeps the bee from escaping. You can just keep on doing like that. Eventually the bees will try to crawl upwards. Their natural insti instinct is to crawl upwards. So if you're holding the net to where the bee is crawling upwards towards the opening, they're more likely to get out. So it's good to always just keep the, the net moving just so they can't crawl out. The other method to catching bees is if you see one and you can get fairly close to it without spooking it, you can just take the net and plop it right down on top just like that. And once it's plopped down on top, you just grab the net and hold it up like this. And like I said, they crawl upward instinctively. And then once they get to the top of the net, you can cinch it off like that so they can't get out. And you want to do this again for 10 minutes. So at the end of 10 minutes, you'll have a net full of bees in the very top and you'll go put those in the soap water. Also, keep in mind that you may encounter other bees such as solitary bees, carpenter bees, and honey bees. If you're not sure, go ahead and catch any bee that you see. Capturing bees will take some practice, so keep at it. Next, we're going to show you how to transfer the bees from the net into the soap water to be immobilized. This next step will be lethal to the bees. Unfortunately, this is a necessary part of the project so we can gather valuable genetic information. However, lethally sampling bees has been well studied and has shown that there is no negative impact on the populations, especially since we will be mainly taking the non-breeding workers that are most active in July. The data that this project produces will eventually save many more bees than are lethally sampled. After 10 minutes is up and you have your net full of bees, you're going to want to take them and either use one of two methods. You can take the top and shake it so that way they go towards the bottom of the net or you can raise up because the bees will naturally want to go upwards and then slowly as they move up, move your hand up the net. And also during this part, you're going to want to use gloves if at all possible because you might get stung. Once you have your bees in the pocket of the top of the net, you're going to want to take your bowl of soap water and then slowly put the bees into the net or into the soap water, excuse me. And then afterwards, hurry up, close the lid. And then after 10 minutes, the bees should be immobile enough for you to transfer them to the ethanol. And then you can move on to the next site. To save time, go ahead and drive to the next site while your bees are soaking. By the time you arrive, they should be immobile and you can transfer them to the ethanol and label your vial. Make sure on the label you include your name, the park and mile marker where the survey took place, and the date. Make sure you're using a pencil or a permanent marker so the label does not wear off. Also, be sure to use a new vial at each site. You don't want to mix up specimens between sites. You should now have all the skills needed to participate in the Blue Ridge Bumblebee Megatransect. Thank you for all your hard work. We couldn't do it without you.